Well, hey guys, for today's video, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step step how to get rid of heat rash. It's very uncomfortable to deal with, otherwise known as prickly heat or milly area. Heat rash is really common in the summer months. It's these red blotches with little red itchy bumps, most common in the skin folds of adults. It also can affect babies. People who are in the hospital, laid up in bed for a long time, are also very vulnerable to heat rash. Heat rash is caused by trapping of sweat in the sweat glands. The purpose of sweat is to evaporate and cool the body. But if it can't properly evaporate, it gets trapped down there in the sweat gland. And the body's compensatory response to that when it's hot is to make more sweat, but that sweat can't evaporate. And so what ends up happening is you have a plugged up sweat gland that leads to a lot of irritation and these itchy bumps. Those little bumps can go on to fill with fluid and look like little water blisters, or they can get filled up with pus. Not only is heat rash common in the summer months, but it can be triggered by working out anytime you are basically getting excessively sweaty and the sweat can't properly evaporate. For babies, this is most common if they are overswaddled. But in an adult, you can think of overswaddling as like wearing very tight clothes or clothes that are constrictive and don't allow for good evaporation of sweat or maybe trap sweat up against the skin surface. So how do you get rid of heat rash fast? The first thing to do may seem obvious, but it's in your best interest is to get out of the heat. So long as you're in the heat where your body is going to do is try and make more sweat to cool you off but the sweat can't evaporate and that's only going to aggravate the rash further as soon as you can come inside into the air conditioning or into a room that has good circulation a fan get out of the heat that is the first thing that you want to do once you come inside you want to take a cool shower that is going to help lower the body temperature cool the skin surface and provide you some symptomatic relief from that itch you also can apply cool compresses to the skin this is going to help not only alleviate the itching sensation, but it's also going to help with cooling your body and preventing worsening of that heat rash. The longer you keep your body hot and overheated, the more your body is going to try and make more sweat, which is going to aggravate the rash and lead to those itchy water blisters and pus filled bumps. If you've taken a cool shower, once you get out of the shower, you want to be very gentle with your skin. You're actually going to want to pat dry the skin very gently or alternatively allow the skin to just air dry. You see, when you have heat rash, the area that is affected, it's very vulnerable, it's hyper irritable, and rubbing the skin too harshly can further aggravate the heat rash. Along those lines, you don't wanna try out any exotic skincare products. I highly discourage the use of heavily scented moisturizers when you are dealing with a heat rash because the affected area of heat rash is essentially an impaired skin barrier and heavy fragrances can be very very, very irritating. Likewise, this is not any time to go experimenting with those tree hot sugar scrubs. They smell great, they're fun, etc. but your skin barrier cannot quite handle that. You don't wanna shave over a heat rash. You don't want to use any kind of loofah or harsh scrubs. Just be very, very gentle. Because the skin barrier there is impaired when you do shower, you don't wanna use soap on these areas. It cannot handle it. You wanna be super, super gentle. Just rinse the skin. Sweat is a skin irritant. And this is part of the reason why your skin is so much more vulnerable to irritation when you have heat rash. You also want to make sure that you get out of sweaty clothing as soon as possible. Sweaty clothing further traps sweat up against the skin surface. And as I said, sweat is an irritant. So when you have sweaty clothing rubbing up against your skin, it further drives more irritation. It's going to aggravate that itch. Hanging out in sweaty clothing, regardless of heat rash or not, also makes you more vulnerable to developing little infections in the hair follicle. This is known as folliculitis, which as a side note, I have an entire video all about folliculitis, bacterial infection in the hair follicle most commonly, leads to uh, acne-like breakouts that are super itchy. That's another common summertime rash related to sweat and sweaty clothing. So definitely check that video out if that's something that you deal with frequently. You wanna change into dry clothing and choose loose, flowy, breathable fabrics that are smooth on the skin surface. If you are inside in the air conditioning and you're not feeling overheated anymore, you may choose cotton. It's very smooth on the skin surface. Cotton, however, is not so great when you're sweating because it doesn't wick moisture 
moisture away particularly well. This is not a good time to go putting on leggings or tight jeans. You really want to let your skin breathe. And I always joke, you know, it's the skin, it, it's not like your lungs. It, it, there's no respiration going on. But to a certain extent, you really want good circulation over the skin surface because you really want to facilitate evaporation of sweat. To get things back on track thermoregulation wise, try standing in front of a fan. Alternatively, if you have a little handheld fan, this is a great time to bring it out, especially targeting that air circulation to areas where you have skin on skin to contact like under the arms go ahead and lift up the breasts if you're getting a lot of heat rash under the breast and let that fan keep the skin there dry and let that air circulate over if you are someone who has has to be in bed and you're developing heat rash on the back try rolling over onto your side removing your shirt and just letting the fan circulate air over the skin surface while you want to avoid exotic skincare products exfoliants acids peels scrubs moisturizers can definitely be your friend i suggest choosing a fragrance free moisturizer and a good idea is to put it in the refrigerator let it cool down before applying it to the skin this will help cool the skin surface and it will also help alleviate those symptoms of itch. Whatever you do, try as best you're able to not scratch. I know it's very itchy and it's very, very difficult to not scratch. I highly suggest having some cool compresses on hand in the refrigerator, those little cool packs that you can get at like the Dollar Tree. Instead of going for the skin with your nails, just apply a cool compress. It will start to calm down that itch sensation right away and alleviate it. The reason you don't want to scratch is first of all scratching makes the itch persist longer scratching also can introduce bacteria into the skin putting you at risk for something called impetigo a bacterial skin infection while you're dealing with heat rash this is not a good time to be doing more cardio I am a huge fan of exercise it's great for your health it's great for your skin but when your skin is not able to help you out in terms of regulating body temperature you don't want to go um, getting your heart rate up all the time while you have heat Heat rash because your body's gonna try and make more sweat to keep you cool but it can't do that properly I mean you can do it but it can't release it and so you're going to aggravate this problem don't worry when you take these steps that I've outlined here heat rash can clear up pretty quickly in a couple of days if you don't get relief in a couple of days however I definitely suggest checking in with your health care provider there are prescription medications that also can help you out like topical steroids now at the beginning of the list of things to do to get rid of heat rash fast I said one of the first things you want to do is get out of the heat as soon as possible when you start developing heat rash, pay attention, don't ignore it. Heat rash is a sign that you are getting overheated. Heat rash is a skin sign that you are overdoing it. Your skin provides a lot of clues and it's an early warning sign if you are developing heat rash that you're actually getting overheated. Last year around this time, I did a video on signs of heat stroke and how to avoid heat stroke. So definitely check that video out. But heat rash is kind of your body's way of saying you need to get out of this situation as soon as possible. You can buy colloidal oatmeal at the drugstore. It's pretty affordable. I suggest drawing a cool bath with colloidal oats. They're very soothing to the skin surface. They hydrate, they're non-irritating, and they can help in soothing heat rash, as well as other summertime related rashes like poison ivy. So now that you have some sense of how to get rid of heat rash fast, how can you prevent it in the first place? You want to dress for the elements. The last thing you want to do this summer, if you're somewhere that's super hot, you, you maybe spend a lot of time outdoors or doing things that work up quite a sweat, the last thing you want to do is go into these situations with super restrictive clothing that's not breathable, that traps sweat up against the skin surface. That's going to make you overheat, impair the evaporation of sweat, putting you at risk for heat rash. Stick to breathable fabrics. Again, cotton is very smooth on the skin surface, but it doesn't wick away moisture particularly well and it's not the best material for outdoor activities where you're gonna be working up a sweat or any kind of fitness activity. Instead, you might want to choose a uh, synthetic fabric, which tend to be better at moisture wicking. Unfortunately, a lot of athletic wear that is made from synthetic fabrics, it can be very restrictive, which likewise can trap sweat up against the skin surface. So choose something like a, a flowy yoga top made out of a synthetic material. Skirts are a great option to reduce heat rash in the uh, 
uh, folds between the legs, the inner thigh area, the groin, uh, loose tops, loose shorts. These materials are not only good for preventing heat rash, but also they are good for preventing you from developing folliculitis. Again, a lot of the same risk factors for developing heat rash can also make you vulnerable to folliculitis. Those itchy pimples that happen you know, often on the rear end, but really anywhere on the body. Change out of sweaty clothing as soon as possible. You may wanna start using an antifungal powder especially in the skin folds, to absorb moisture. You also wanna stay hydrated. If you are working out outdoors or doing some yard work, you wanna make sure that you're taking in good fluids and electrolytes, like an electrolyte drink beverage, stay hydrated. This is really going to help your body out a lot in regulating your temperature. Make sure you have a fan going to allow for good circulation over the skin surface. Really try and make sure that when you are working out, getting your heart rate up, that you're doing so in a well-ventilated area. Another tip that I find highly effective, spray myself with a little bit of water mid-workout and have a fan going at the same time. This kind of acts almost like second sweat in a sense in that you mist the cool water over the skin surface and then the fan helps it to evaporate, pull it off, helping to cool the body off. So it really helps to do that mid-workout. That, that, that can really help keep you from getting overheated. It sounds counterproductive like that you're going to spray yourself with moisture, but um, it, you know, it, provided you're in a space where you have good circulation and it can evaporate well, then it actually can help keep you cool, almost acting as second sweat, and really keep that thermoregulation pathway on, on point, reducing the chances. Provided you're wearing you know, loose-fitting clothing and the like and you have good circulation, it really reduces that trapping of sweat up against the skin surface further and the formation of heat rash. It's all about keeping your body cool um, and allowing for good air circulation, good airflow over the skin surface so that that sweat can evaporate and ultimately keep you cool. All right, y'all, those are my tips for how to get rid of heat rash, how to prevent heat rash. It is not pleasant to deal with. Again, listen to your skin. It's giving you clues that you are starting to overheat, that you're overdoing it. The consequences of continuing in that fashion can actually be deadly. Uh, again, check out my video on heat exhaustion and heat stroke that I did last year. Lots of warning signs to look out for in that video. The heat is on. Comment below, has it gotten super hot where you live? It's, it's starting to get pretty hot here. Uh, I hope this video was informative. I hope it was helpful to you all. Now that we're heading into summer, I, you know, I have a lot of videos on different skin issues that tend to co come up during the summer months. On the end slide, I'm going to link my most recent video on how to remove a tick the right way. Yes, there is a right way and a wrong way. So definitely check that video out, especially if you plan to do a lot of camping or hiking or outdoor activities this summer. You wanna make sure you are equipped with the knowledge to properly remove a tick because they do carry a lot of problematic little diseases that you don't wanna catch. All right, y'all, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.